HDH stands for Helpers for Domestic Helpers. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization that provides advice, uh, guidance, and assistance to migrant domestic workers in Hong Kong. It's about 1,500 average every year, new clients on top of existing cases. Uh, so we could have like up to 3,500, 4,000 contacts with clients every year. Yes, we, the people that we see are, you know, are exploited. Um, you know, some of them are, are seriously abused. We had even um, dealt with rape cases, you know, like physical abuse cases. Uh, but more common are exploitation by uh, employment agencies. Uh, before they can find, you know, before they can find a job in Hong Kong, they have to pay a huge amount of money to employment agencies. And often they are taken to money lenders to sign bogus loan agreements to um, circumvent um, the regulations that prohibit employment agencies uh, from charging excessive fees. Yeah, I work like uh, more than 12 hours a day. Since 1991, so that should be about 26 years. I prefer more privacy and less hour, something like that. And I hope they could process the eight hours working here, which is the very usual for the other countries, which is, we're hoping for that. <laughs> because of the small houses in Hong Kong, often they have to stay in or you know, sleep in the kitchen, on the kitchen floor, uh, corridors, you know, made do beds on the hallways. Those are some of the immigration cases as well, are common, you know, common illegal employment. Within two weeks after premature termination of the contract, they know they have to leave. So if someone is being abused, um, she'll just, you know, put up with it until push the limit because she knows that if she complains, she could lose her job and then she will have to leave Hong Kong. Also, um, the result of the two-week rule is if she, um, you know, if she's terminated and she wants to pursue her case, um, She's not allowed to work while engaged in, in litigation, and she, you know, while she stays in a shelter, uh, she has to pay for visa extension fees, um, and so you know, that makes it very difficult to pursue justice. I'm working here uh, three years already. I have uh, one Finnish contract, and this is my new sponsor. I have three children. I'm only the breadwinner of the family, so I need to work because of my children. I want only the privacy and of course respect because some of the employer are uh, they don't you know they don't understand what you feel just they will angry like that I don't have own room I I sleep with the the son of my employer it's okay because it's there in the contract in the first place but of course uh, the pro the problem is they will go enter the room it's you are sleep and then they are, especially the boy so that's why. should be both political and, and cultural um, changes, of course. Political, you know, it comes to the policies like the two-week rule, the living requirements, um, maximum number of working hours, um, you know, enforcement of uh, or, or um, uh, better enforcement of existing regulations that uh, are supposed to, put, to protect them. Uh, but cultural changes as well, um, you know, attitudes towards domestic workers should change. Um, there should be afforded respect and, and dignity and, and be treated as, as workers, as employees. Um, you probably know about the ILO convention that now um, calls them as, call them as workers, not, not as helpers. And they should be called, you know, should be treated as such. It's, it's, a, it's almost not a choice to, to work abroad. It's a necessity for them you know, in order to be able to support their family because they, you know, back home. You know, and even if their job's back home, you know, what they will earn working abroad would be you know, much more than what they would earn in their home country.